practice test for the first part of Excel. And uh, we're on sheet one, and the instructions for sheet one are kind of long, so they're actually spread over two pages here. So let's go check them out. Uh, first thing I want to do is save it on my desktop with the name practice test part one, and then put my first name and last name on it. So let's do a save as. And I want to go to the desktop. And practice test part one, and then I want to put my name in on the end of it. And save that. Yes. Okay. Um, merge and center the text in A1 over columns from name to note. So A1, this is the name column, this is the note column, so basically over all of the data. Merge and center. And set the font for the entire worksheet to 10 point for Dana. And we'll do two of these here. Um, make the text in A1 the title style. So let's go back here. Make the whole thing uh, 10 point for Dana. Just type in the first few letters and it'll come up for you. Hit enter. And then take this and do a cell style called title. So we've done all of this stuff. I think what I'll do is I will just uh, change the color on it after I do it. Make the text in A4 to L4, uh, the cell style called heading 3, and also turn on the wrap text feature. Uh, make sure no words get split. So. Uh, heading 3 on row 4 here, and our cell styles heading 3, turn on wrap text, and uh, yeah, this one got chopped up, so we just need to make this a little bit wider, there we go, and everything else looks like it's came out pretty good, okay, so we have done those two. And set the height of row 4 to 50. So let's do that. We can just right click and do row height and type in 50 and hit enter. And then let's go back here. We just did that one. Let's make it black. Total purchase value is shares times the purchase cost per share. So total purchase value equals shares times asterisk asterisk purchase cost per share and hit enter and it's thirty one thousand uh, dollars that takes care of this one and calculate the total current value by multiplying shares by the current cost per share so that's going to be a formula so it starts with equal sign and shares times the current cost per share twenty four hundred and that takes care of that one now. Let's make it black. And calculate profit or loss by subtracting purchase value from current value. So it's going to be current value minus uh, purchase value. So H5 minus G5. And it should give us a negative value because it went down. So we lost money on that, so that should be negative. Okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, calculate the sum of the total purchase value column, the sum of the total current value column, and the sum of the profit and loss column. Well, before I can do any sums, I probably need to copy these formulas all the way down the page. So let's get our fill handle here and copy them down. And then I want totals down here. And uh, if I do an auto sum, uh, it picks everything, including that empty cell there, which probably doesn't really matter, but I'm going to drag it up. And hit Enter. And then I'm going to copy this over, and it will sum the column of numbers that are above it. Okay. And that takes us through the instructions on this page. So we're all done with those. And now we got some more. Um, calculate each stock's percent increase by finding the increase, which we already have, and dividing it by the total purchase 
value. So um, I want the increase or decrease divided by the total purchase value. Okay, so it went from 31 to 24. You know, 7 out of 31 is getting close to 25%, and it's going down, so it's going to have a negative value. So that looks good. Uh, let's flip back over here and um, calculate each stocks. Percent of the total portfolio. Divide the current value by the total of the current value. So um, I want to know what fraction this 24,000 is out of, so do division, uh, the total down here, I'm sorry, the total down here of the current value and hit F4 to put the dollar signs in or you can type them in yourself and hit enter and so it looks like it's about 3% of my total portfolio so if 24,000 is 3% then um, it must be close to 800,000 for the total and it is 747,000 Okay, let's flip back over and sheet one instructions, and we've just done the first two items here. Let's make them black. Calculate the sum of the percentage of total portfolio uh, and put in the totals row, and we should get uh, the number one. And in the note column, put a formula, put a plus sign if it shows a profit and a minus sign if it shows a loss. That's going to require an if statement. So um, first of all, uh, let's copy these formulas all the way down as well. And I want the sum of uh, this column right here, the percent of the total portfolio, that should add up to 100%. And if I just do an auto sum here, and again, it doesn't really matter here, but just to be completely accurate, we'll eliminate that extra blank column. And it does add up to 1, which is 100%. Okay, now, over here, if it shows a profit, so I want to I do an if function, so that's going to be on my... Um, data, I'm sorry, I'm on formulas tab, and uh, it's a logical function, and probably the easiest way to do it is just bring up this function arguments dialog box, and the logical test is, um, if they made a profit, this number will be positive, or it'll be greater than zero is another way of saying that, so greater than zero, and if that's true, put a plus in there, and if it's not, put a minus sign in there, and notice it puts quotation marks in for us, click on OK, and this one had a loss, so we've got a negative sign there. Let's drag this all the way down. And let's go back to our instructions here. And we've done these two. Format the shares column as whole numbers with a column, a comma, and zero decimal places. So here's my shares column. I want a comma and zero decimal places. See, I get the pound signs in there because with the decimal places it's not big enough. Um, format the purchase cost per share and the current price per share as dollar values with two decimal places. So let's go back here and these two numbers here should be dollar values oh, darn it, with two I'm sorry, two decimal places is what we get by default. And I missed this one here, so we'll just go ahead and do that one as well. And that's good. Now let's uh, go back over here. Um, format the total purchase value, total current value, and profit or loss columns with a dollar sign and zero decimal places. Those numbers are bigger, so the decimal places probably don't matter very much. So let's take uh, all of these here. And I don't think it's going to hurt us if we include those blank cells as part of our formatting. And we want a dollar sign, but zero decimal places. Okay, and yeah, it didn't do anything to these empty cells here, so we're good. Okay, so that takes us all the way through. Uh, I said don't forget the numbers at the bottom, totals at the bottom, and we didn't. Uh, format the percent columns with percents in one decimal place, and don't forget the total. So let's go over here, and all of these numbers here are going to be uh, percents with uh, zero decimal places, or did it say uh, one decimal place, percents with one decimal place, and you get zero by default, so I need to increase the decimal places, there we go. And um, so that takes care of this one. 
and make the totals roll full. Uh, put a bottom double border below the numbers in the totals row. So let's go down and I want these numbers to be bold. I don't know if it said anything about the word totals. I thought it said numbers. And I want a border underneath them, which is a double bottom border, which is right here. And if I click off now, I should be able to see that double border. And uh, let's go back to our sheet one instructions. Uh, so we've done those two. And right align column C through K. So let's go to do column C through K. C through K. Yeah, it should all be right aligned. Okay. Mark that off. Center align the category column and the note column. So let's go back over here. Category column is this one. We'll scroll up and double check. It's that. And the note column is over here. And those two should be centered. Just do a control click uh, to do the non adjacent selection there. And uh, change the name in the header to your first and last name in 10 point Arial Bowl. Okay. Change the name in the header. So let's go take a look at the header for this sheet. And if I go to insert, this is one way to get there. And we should be able to see header and footer. And um, it doesn't say where to put them. We usually put them over on the right side. So we'll do Tom Klein. And then we're supposed to make it, um, I think it said 10 point aerial. So it's already and then bold. And let's go back to our normal view down here. And we'll go back. And I got to be. I always forget to do that. I have to click outside of the header and footer and then go to normal view and then I'll go back. Okay. So I wanted um, first and last name in 10 point aerial bold, which I've done. Uh, make all columns as wide as they need to be. So in other words, I want any words that are split. I don't want any pound signs where numbers are supposed to be. And it's looking, oh, it is not looking good. I got to make this wider. I was chopping off the names there. Okay. Now, um, do a print preview, send it the orientation to landscape, center it horizontally without grid lines, make sure it fits on a single page. So let's do that. File, print. Okay, I got grid lines visible. First of all, let's do the easy stuff first. Uh, orientation is right here. And I want to go to landscape orientation. And I want to scale it to fit on one page. So I want all the columns on one page. And I want to go to my page setup here and turn off grid lines right here. And click on OK. And that looks better. And the last thing I want to do, I probably shouldn't have put this in because with something this wide, it's going to be centered automatically as soon as we do uh, this fit all columns on one page. But the place you would do that, if that was not the case, is you would go here and say center horizontally and click on OK. But you're not going to see any difference because it's already uh, pretty much wall to wall on the piece of paper here. Okay, so that takes care of everything for sheet one, which is a lot of simple formulas and formatting. And uh, this video is long enough, so we will stop here and we'll continue with the rest of the practice test in the next video.